Welcome to yet another hash define video. In this video, we are going to walk through an image captioning model code written in Python using TensorFlow. Now, there are a lot of uh, videos and articles which you can find online, which explains how image captioning can be done using machine learning. And you know, the code and the approach used in those videos are the same as we see here in fact, I refer to such articles and videos to write this code. Now, the point of making this video is to create a self-learning note so that I can refer in the future and it might also help you if you are on a similar journey. Now, how does this video add value to other existing ones? Well, well, I'm approaching this video as a complete beginner and there may be a lot of questions which you might ask yourself when you go through this code, which, which are normally not explained in other videos. So whatever questions I had while trying to understand the code, you know, I have tried to understand the reasoning behind it using other articles and mainly ChatGPT because it's actually a very good learning tool. So in this video, I'm going to document all these findings and so that it may help you too for a learning image captioning. So let's, uh, before going to walk through the code, let's try to find what we're trying to achieve by doing image captioning. So basically what we're trying to build is a machine learning model. And we input to the model an image and the model should output a caption for the image. So for example, if I have an image of a cat playing with a ball, the model should ideally output cat playing with ball. Now these types of models are called generative models because it's generating a sequence of words based on an input. But how this usually works is the model does not predict this whole caption all at once. Rather, it predicts each word one after the other in multiple iterations. So for example, initially we input the image and an empty caption to the model and the model will output the first word cat. And then we'll, we will input the image and cat and the model will return the next word which is playing and then we will input the image and cat playing and the model will return the next word which is with and finally the model predicts the complete sentence or the caption so this is how the model works when we finally build it and as with any machine learning model, we need to train it using some data. So what is the data in this case? The data we are going to use are a set of images for which we already have captions. So for this, we are going to use the Flickr 8K dataset, which is publicly available. It consists of 8,000 images and for each image it has five captions so we are going to use this data to train the model and then if we provide the model with an image which is not in the set it should ideally generate the caption so with this aim in mind let's walk through the code and i've written this code in kaggle and these are the necessary imports which we will go through as we walk through the code and following that these are the directories where you can f you will find the training data the images as well as the captions so first we initialize the vgg16 model now what is vgg16 model you can see it is available as part of TensorFlow 
And this is a pre-trained model, which is an image classification model. So, so what this actually does is, you input an image and it will output one of the 1000 categories of images which is it has learned so it, if you if the input image is that of a car then it will output the index corresponding to the car which may be 32 i'm using this as an example so basically it is an image classification pre-trained model and it has 1000 image categories that it can recognize for the input image now coming back to the code you can see that this line initializes the model and we are building a keras model with the inputs same as the model inputs but the output you can see is not the final layer output of the model but rather the last word but one layer in python layers of minus one refers to the last layer of minus two refers to the last but one layer now let's go through the layers of the VGG16. The last layer of the model is a softmax layer. So basically it uh, gives the probability for the thousand categories which the model has learned. So if the image is out of a car, the input uh, corresponding to the car will have the maximum probability. But what we are interested is not in this classification layer, but rather in the just the layer before that, which is of size 4096. And this gives a high level feature uh, definition of the image in a vector format. So this feature can be used in training our captioning model. So you can see here, the last but one layer is used as an output. And if you print the model summary, you can see that the VGG16 is a convolutional neural network. So it has multiple layers of convolution and max pooling layers. And finally, this layer of 4096, which is this, extracts the features in the image, meaning it extracts the features in a numeric format which can be used for training our image captioning model. Now let's also go through the model summary. You can see that in the model summary, there are multiple layers stacked over one another. And the important thing to note here is the output shape of each layer. You can see that the first parameter in all of this is none because this refers to the batch size. given only during the training time and then we have the dimensions of the image the image resolution or the shape expected by the first layer of the vgg16 uh, pre-trained model is 224 into 224 and the last uh, dimension in the shape is the number of channels so the image is 224 into 224 and it has three channels for R, G, B, a color. And the parameters are the number of parameters like weights and biases, which can be tuned or trained or learned in each layer. And in the final layer, you know, the dimension is 4096. So it's a vector of length 4096, which gives a higher level a feature representation of the image. Now in the following code, we can see that we are going through each of the image in the directory where we have downloaded the images. And for each image, we are going to learn the features or extract the features from the image and store it to a features array features dictionary 
So if I go line by line, uh, this lists all the image files in the directory. And for each image name, image file name, we're going to repeat this process. And TQDM is for showing the progress bar animation while we loop through this. So, the, so for the first image name, it gets the image path and it loads the image and here we are specifying the target size of 224 into 224. The reason being, this is the shape of the input expected by the first layer of VGG16. So as you can see here, this is the shape where the input layer of VGG16 expects the dimension to be. So for this reason, we are resizing the images to this exact required same image dimension and then we convert the image to an array and then we are reshaping the image so the shape of 0 and shape of 1 and shape of 2 which is 3 the RGB are the same but you can see that we are adding a new dimension which is 1 so this represents the batch size so one meaning we are going to feed in only a single image at a time uh, to predict and then we pre-process the input we pre-process the image now this pre-process input is provided by vg16 so let's use chat gp to know what it does So as you can see, it does a lot of pre-processing which is required by the VG16 model and it involves a resizing normalization and mainly it also has the channel reorder reordering because the model expects the channel to be in BGR format and not RGB. So it does all of that. It does all the conversions required by the input layer of the model. And, and then we call model.predict with the image and the features are obtained. Now the features are stored in the features uh, dictionary and using the image ID as index. So image ID is nothing but the image name after removing the extension part. We are spreading based on dot and taking the first part. So only the image name without the extension is used as uh, image ID. So when the loop completes, we will have all uh, the features extracted in the features dictionary and the dictionary will be such that it has the image ID, which is the name followed by the features. So if we have this dictionary ready uh, once this code completes running. So what we have done until now is that we have a set of images from the Flickr 8K uh, dataset. And each of these images we pass through the VGG16 model and it extracts the features for each of these images and we store uh, all these features in a dictionary mapped by the image ID and its feature. Now this is the image pre-processing part. Now we have to do pre-processing for captions. So for captions, you can see the captions are within a file. As you can see, it's, the captions are available in captions.txt file. And we open the file and the next of file actually skips the first line of the file, which is not relevant for our case. The captions with which has the image ID and the caption starts only from the second line. Now let's see how this the format of the caption file is. Now the caption file in each line there will be image name and followed by the caption. Same on second line and third line image name followed by the caption. 
Now the problem is that the image name can appear at multiple places because for each image there are up to five different captions. So we need to convert this such that the image name occurs once and the captions are stored as an array or a list like c1, c2, c5. So we are going to create a dictionary with the image name which is the same as id as the key and the captions as the value. So for that we read each line in the captions document split it by comma the first part will be the image id the second part will be the caption and the image id we split it by period so that we take only the image file name without the extension the same was used for storing the features the caption is converted to a string and we create a new mapping with image id if it has not yet been created otherwise we just append the caption to the image id so what we have when this whole process is run is a dictionary with the key uh, image id and a list of captions c1 c2 c5 so this is stored as mapping we already have a dictionary called features where by id we have the feature of the image so both this data are used to train our model now before that we need to do some pre-processing for these captions let's see why we need to So we need to go through each of the captions in the mappings and we need to convert all the captions to lowercase because we don't want the model to distinguish semantically between uppercase and lowercase letters because by meaning there is no difference between uppercase and lowercase letters. So we want everything to be, to be in lowercase so that the model is easy. It is easier for the model to learn without complications. Also, we remove all the known alphabet characters like numbers doesn't make sense in image captioning. So we need only words, text in the output. So we are removing all the known alphabets and we also replace multiple spaces to a single space. We don't want to provide any semantic attachment when multiple spaces come. They will affect the model training. And finally, we also remove all those words whose length is one. For example, we remove all these A's in the caption because it does not uh, provide any value. And finally, the most important thing, we add a start sequence and end sequence markers before and after text. Now, this is important because when we finally uh, build the model when we finally build the model it takes as input the image features and the caption start sequence this is useful also during training phase and it will return the first word of the caption and then we will input the image feature with start sequence and first word and it will input word 2 and then we will do start sequence word 1 word 2 and it will give word 3 and finally when the caption is fully generated the model replies with end sequence and that's when we stop this iteration and provide and extract or get the caption generated by the model the same is used during training um, which we will see in a bit. So as you can see, this these are the captions before we uh, did the cleaning. So after cleaning, you can see that uh, the our code has added start sequence and end sequence to each of the caption. The A's are removed and the 
casing is all small now and then we are concatenating all the captions to create a vocabulary so we are creating we are just joining all the captions together and you can see that all captions together is around 40 445 in length and these are the last 10 captions in the set which we are created and now we create a tokenizer and fit that with all captions so the tokenizer gets the vocabulary the vocabulary size that is the unique number of words in the caption is 8485 and we can also calculate the maximum length of a caption which we have in all our captions so for all each caption in our list let's split by the word get the count and get max of that so 35 is the maximum uh, length of the caption which we has in the training data set now this 35 is important because while training as well as while predicting we are not inputting image followed by start sequence to the model for example in the first iteration we rather input start sequence followed by blank for the rest of the portion of the caption text so this will be of length 35 it will have just the start sequence starting marker the model will then predict for example cat and then we will in the next iteration start sequence cat then the remaining you know whatever it is so the wall length will always of the input of the model while training and prediction will always be 35 the output will be the only the next word so that is the reason why we had to find the maximum length so this is the input the maximum length of the input of text in our model and then we are going to create a train test split based on the mapping mapping dot keys will give all the image ids which are the image file names it is these using these ids that we that we get all uh, the image features and the captions so we split them by 90 percent for uh, training and the rest 10 percent for testing now this is a data generator generator function this generates data for training the model so let's see where this is used so then the model is created let's just skip over and see how where the generator is used now you can see here the generator is initialized the function and it is used while training the model you can see the model that fit uses the generator and the generator it 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 returns x1 x2 and y and let's try to understand what these x1 x2 and y are and they are returned when the batch size is met so mainly this generator function is running continuously and whenever the batch size of input output is met it will just return those values so let's see and understand what this x1 x2 and y are first so we have the image feature and that is x1 we have the caption which always starts with start sequence that is x2 when we give it to the model we expect the first word to be returned which is cat this is y we know this from the caption because we know the caption the caption is cat playing with ball so x1 and x2 are the first set of inputs and cat is the y for that in the next step again image feature is x1 start sequence followed by cat is x2 and what is y y is playing so we are building a set of x1 x2 and y values for training the model the model initially does not know how to predict cat but when it predicts something gibberish first we tell that 
you know what we expect is cat so the model learns it optimizes and learns its weights and biases based on the y value which we provide and after sufficient amount of training the model learns how to you know the predict the next word based on the image feature and the captions which we have so far so let's now go through uh, the generator function so as you can see it returns x1 x2 and y and you can see that it uh, for each image that is each key that is for each image it gets all the captions that for each caption of each image so first it tokenizes the caption string into sequence so what does this mean so let's ask chat gpt what this does So what it actually does is that it takes us input a string and converts it into uh, sequences or indexes. It again. So as you can see, each of the word is mapped to an integer. Now why? Because machine learning models doesn't work with strings, it works with numbers. So the tokenizer, we have already given the maximum, all the captions to the tokenizer. The tokenizer has built the vocabulary and by vocabulary it has a dictionary where each word has an index. So when you call text to sequences with the input text, it's converting the string to a list of integers. Or a vector which you can use to train the model so the sequence is actually converting the captions which are strings to a sequence of integers or indexes or you can call the sequence as a vector and then for that entire sequence we are going to split it into input and output pairs so what does it mean is that if we have cat playing with ball, the first set of input will be start sequence, the output should be cat. Start sequence cat should return playing. Start sequence cat playing should return with. And finally it should return end sequence. So all those combinations are produced here. See, a range 1 to length of sequence meaning we have start sequence and end sequence or let's make it a little more clear we have start sequence cat playing with ball end sequence so from one to six initially you know the in and out sequences would be the in sequence would be ss and the out sequence should be cat then ss cat playing so this is in this is out then ss cat playing it should return with so the code here it's generating all such possible combinations and sequence of i would be the words till i and sequence of i is the next word to be predicted now this is important now the in sequences we are padding the in sequences with the maximum length the maximum length here is 35 which is the maximum length of the caption so we cannot just provide this to the model the model's input will always have the length of 35 we will just pad the remaining with zeros so that's what uh, this uh, function does 
so we can just ask GPT what does pad sequence sequences do So as you can see, if the max length is 10 and we have a list of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, it fills the remaining with zeros. So all the inputs will be of length 10. You know the remaining are, uh, portions are padded with zero. And the out sequence, what we're doing, we're going to convert the out sequence which is an index. So normally the out sequence will be the index corresponding to the word predicted. So for example, the cat may have an index of 4. This can be an index 16. So instead of providing 416, we are converting this into a one hot vector encoding using the two categorical function. Now what does that mean? So suppose the model has predicted cat and its word index is 4 and in the vocabulary if you go up you can see that the vocabulary size is 8485 so suppose that we have a list with 8485 elements you can see the cat is 4 so 1 2 3 4 so this will create a vector with just the index of the predicted word as one and the others as zero now why is this done let's ask let's just ask why is called on out sequence in image captioning code so i have not given code to chat gpt but i think he, it will understand otherwise we will have to provide the code so as you can see the resulting vector for one is will be like this so only it will be a sparse a vector with a single one where the index of the word is so uh, to make it clear suppose the vocab size is 20 and the index of word cat is 5 what would be the output See, the output will be of length 20 but a single one where the index of the cat is so this will be the output when we call to categorical why is this done we have already asked this question why is this done to train the model the target values for each time step is one hot encoded So we can ask what is the advantage of one hot encoding of word. So I had to give the complete code for the generator a function to chat GP to get a better explanation on why one hot encoding is required and is the common practice in you know sequence prediction task for uh, better training the model you know i'm not in a position to explain what this says maybe you can find it on your own so anyway it's one hot encoded and then you know we keep on storing these values in x1 x2 and y and when the batch size is met we just return these values and empty all the arrays and do this all over again so now let's uh, build the model the code actually builds the model so 
this is the model architecture you can see on one side uh, there is the image and the, on the other side there is caption and both of them are processed and the features extracted and then added together and then done a prediction so let's go through in this in detail so as you can see this is uh, the architecture of the model which we are building so uh, on this side you can see 4096 so this is the features extracted by the VGG16 model you should remember that uh, the layer the last but one layer of uh, the VGG16 model outputs a vector of uh, dimension 4096 so this is coming straight from there this is the image feature which we got by passing the images through VGG16 and then we have a dropout layer the dropout layer is used to avoid overfitting you will need to learn more about this about what overfitting is and what a dropout layer is you can refer to other videos and on this side you can see that this is the caption 35 is the maximum length of the caption which we have calculated so all our inputs during training and testing and also prediction will have an input of 35 if we have not predicted all the words then uh, it will be padded with zeros so now it is followed by an embeddings layer now an embeddings layer is where we convert uh, the input caption which is a sequence of uh, length 35 to a vector of size 256 now this is a higher level representation of the sequence uh, embeddings uh, you should learn more about embeddings because in embeddings uh, the output vector of similar words or semantically related words will be close together so it's like extracting meaning out of a sequence of numbers that's what this layer does and then we all also has a dropout layer which again is used to avoid uh, overfitting and then we have the LSTM the long short term the long short term memory layer which is the one which is predicting uh, the text so you can learn about LSTM by referring to uh, other videos I would recommend the videos by StatQuest for this uh, excellent explanation and then uh, we also have a dense layer here for higher level uh, representation of the image and we add both these together we add the values of both these together uh, you can see that uh, the output shape of both these layers are 256 so they can be added uh, in another layer of 256 and then we have another uh, dense layer uh, followed by a softmax layer so in the code you can see here the inputs input shape image coming for first zero nine six coming from vgg 16 then there is a dropout and there is a dense layer and on the image caption side the input is of max length 35 we have an embedding layer dropout and an lstm and then both these uh, layers are added another dense la layer followed by a softmax layer so the output is predicting a word in the vocabulary so that's what this means it it's predicting a word in the uh, vocabulary it will give a probability distribution over the vocabulary size and so the model is created and then we have to train the model so for training the model we are using the data generator and we have to run it for at least 20 epochs it this will take uh, much time even in Kaggle it can take anywhere between 5 to 10 hours to train this model and once the model is uh, trained we can use it to predict captions so to predict the caption what we do is first we provide the start sequence as the input text and we're going to generate over the max length which is the maximum length of the caption with which the model will uh, predict and we'll need to uh, convert the in text to sequence that is a list of integers and pad uh, the remaining uh, up to max length that is 35 then we are predicting using the model we give the image and the in text the sequence and we get a probability distribution over the vocabulary and we use uh, the arg max function to get the index and using that index we are getting the word we are getting the word from the tokenizer 
which has already pr provided with the index of all the words in our vocabulary. So now we repeat the process. We just add the word predicted to our index. So this would become start sequence and if it is cat, it would become start sequence cat. And it will, you know, the, to, um, tokenize and uh, it will convert the, uh, the words in the caption to sequences, pad the remaining, uh, predict the next word, and it will cycle this process till the entire caption is uh, reached. So when n sequence is reached, we break. Otherwise, if it predicts a non um, sensical word, it also breaks, and that's how. The model works so i hope you find this video useful i'm not sure i'm doing this mainly for uh, for my own reference in the future uh, if you have any questions we can discuss uh, in the comment section i'm not an expert i'm just learning and these are my learning notes so if i had made some uh, mistakes please uh, let them know in the comment section we can all learn together thank you